On today's show, Ford says hybrids are better for ride sharing than electrics. FCA says it will out earn Ford this year. And Nissan has the last laugh with the Murano Cross Cabriolet. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the voice of the automotive industry. Wow, would this be a role reversal? FCA could make more money than Ford this year. FCA is projecting its EBIT earnings could hit $10.8 billion this year, while Ford is projecting it will hit $9.2 billion. On a conference call with stock analyst Sergio Marchione said, quote, I think there is a very strong likelihood that we will outperform Ford in terms of operating earnings in 2018. And that's something that if I told any of us in the room here that that would have been doable five years ago, nobody would have believed this. That's right, nobody would have believed it, especially the people in Dearborn. Elio Motors has been talking for years about its gasoline-powered two-seater, but this two-seater electric could beat it to the market. It's the Ampere, with a range of 100 miles and a price tag just under 10 grand. That's about $2,500 more than an Elio, but it sure looks terrific. It will be manufactured in Los Angeles, and the company claims they will be on sale next year. Do you remember Nissan's funky Murano Cross Cabriolet? You got to! It was a weird mashup of an SUV and a convertible, that never sold in big numbers and was eventually axed in 2014. The media mocked it, but Nissan is having the last laugh. The vehicle is in high demand on the used market. According to CarGurus.com, the median price is $25,000, which is about two-thirds of the original sticker price, much higher than other vehicles from the same time, which are at 43% on average. Next week, we'll be revealing some of the details on the teardown of a Tesla Model 3 that's going on right now at Monroe & Associates. That's the company that does competitive benchmarking for automakers and suppliers, and they found some interesting issues with the car, and you will be the first ones to see them. Autonomous cars represent the highest level of technology in the automotive industry, but it's going to take the most basic level of technology to keep them working, and that's coming up next. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Radar, LiDAR, and video cameras on cars can give them amazing vision of what's going on around them. But if they get covered with dirt, snow, or even rain, they're useless. So how do you keep them clean? The supplier Rochling has come up with a solution called the Advanced Active Cleaning System that essentially outfits a vehicle with nine washer nozzles. When the system detects a sensor is blocked, it will spray a cleaning fluid to wash it off, and it uses electronics to automatically determine which lens needs cleaning and regulates how much fluid is sprayed on each part. That makes sure the tank lasts as long as possible. Has a large reservoir, but it's heated to prevent the fluid from freezing and will warn you when it's getting low. You know, this seems like a pretty simple solution to make sure all these advanced driver assistance systems work the way they're supposed to. And before I get into my impressions of the new Jeep Cherokee, I need to thank some of you for pointing out that I completely misquoted the power numbers for the new 2.0-liter turbo engine. It puts out 270 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. Now with that out of the way, I feel like this is the engine that should have been offered from the get-go. Not only does it suit the Cherokee very well, but it makes the crossover much more competitive in the segment. It's now the top of the line choice in powertrain, but only carries a $500 premium over the V6. The big difference between the two engines is that the Turbo 4 puts out 56 more pound-feet of torque, and the V6 can tow 500 pounds more than the four-cylinder turbo. Speaking of weight, the Cherokee went on a bit of a diet and dropped 150 pounds. Things like an aluminum hood and a composite liftgate helped contribute to the savings. The suspension was also retuned in part because of the lightweighting efforts. So you now have a better riding vehicle with an engine that really suits it, 
We're expecting Jeep to have a really good 2018. Pricing for the new Cherokee starts at just over $25,000 and goes up to about $37,500. Jeep expects the 2019 models to start hitting showrooms in the next month or so. When it comes to autonomous ride sharing, what's better, pure electric cars or hybrids? Ford has some strong opinions on it, and that's coming up next. At Bridgestone, our engineers want to help make sure you're not stuck on the side of the road. Our revolutionary drive guard tires are engineered to take a puncture and drive up to 50 miles. Ready to go. Watch our latest Archer demo at BridgestoneTire.com. Both GM and Ford are developing autonomous vehicles for ride sharing, but their strategies are a bit different. GM is going to use the all-electric Chevrolet Bolt for its fleet, while Ford is going the hybrid route. On AutoLine this week, we're joined by Hao Tai Tang, the head of product development and purchasing at Ford, and he explains why Ford believes hybrids make much more sense for autonomous vehicles. We think there are two different things. Um, for us, one of the um, opportunities we see with autonomous vehicles is um, initially they're going to be quite expensive because of the upfront investment and the technology that's in each vehicle. So having really high levels of utilization will be really important. Um, and so for us, it wouldn't make sense to and have that uh, very uh, valuable asset being uh, down to be charging. Mm. Um, so uh, that's why we think a hybrid power pack gives us the best of both worlds. It still allows you to have uh, some element of zero emissions driving. Um, you can still be very fuel efficient, but at the same time have very high uptime. Um, so that's, that's the way we're looking at it. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is the processing power, the computing power right now in the sensor suite is very energy um, intensive. Mm -hmm. um, so that will draw away from the driving range of the vehicle. And of course, like anything, we look forward. Uh, Jim Hackett's really good about encouraging us to think about how technology is going to change. But you have to recognize the team that's doing the development right now, the Ford team, the Argo AI team, we have to use the sensor suite that's available mm. uh, in, in the marketplace today. And with that sensor suite, uh, and you look at the power consumption, it's not compatible, in our opinion, with a full battery electric vehicle. For a deeper dive into product development at Ford, you can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.